So we are reading Aristotle as an example and a defense of virtue ethics as an approach to ethics. And so this video is a sort of account or a broad overview of some of the main features of virtue ethics, just so that we can think about it as a theory and then eventually compare it to the other ethical theories that we look at. And as always, labels like virtue ethics are not uh, very precise, so different virtue or different theories that may or may not count as virtue ethics uh, will share some of these features, but maybe not all of them. Uh, there, it's it's a broad family, and there are similarities and differences, and so nothing about this is sort of fundamental truth about all virtue ethics. But these are broad characteristics which generally apply to most ethical theories that we label as virtue ethics. So we're going to go through four. Um, the first is a focus on character rather than action. So the way Aristotle and the way virtue ethicists in general tend to think about ethics is that ethics is fundamentally a question of what kind of person you should be, uh, what your character should be like, so how should you be, and it's less about what should you do fundamentally. They are, of course, concerned with what should you do. And in fact, most of Aristotle's book is concerned with what should you do. But the way you answer what should you do is by looking at the virtues, by looking at how you should be. So what should you do when it comes to giving away money? Well, you should be a generous person. And so you should give away money in the way a generous person would give away money. Or what should you do when it comes to uh, fighting in battle? Well, you should be a courageous person. You should do what the courageous person would do. So the focus is on how to be rather than what to do. And we answer the second kind of question by looking at the first kind of question. So the second point uh, characteristic of virtue ethics is a focus on sort of practical judgment or practical wisdom, as Aristotle calls it. Uh, that's the translation of phronesis. Um, and the idea is that when we're trying to sort out right from wrong, it's very important to uh, be wise in these matters. And by wisdom, we don't mean a theoretical wisdom, like being a scientist or something. That's not the kind of wisdom. What we're talking about is practical wisdom. So just being the sort of person who knows what the right thing to do is. And that, the virtue ethicist thinks, is very important to ethics. And that's as compared to somebody who thinks that ethics is sort of like a series of rules that you can follow. Because if ethics were a series of rules, you wouldn't have to be particularly wise to be an ethical person. You would just have to learn the rules and follow the rules. So for instance, if you think ethics is a system of rules that you can teach to somebody, you could imagine a, a clever child reading the ethical rules and then deciding to follow them and becoming a very good person. Uh, the child would just have to grasp the rules and follow the rules. Um, you can imagine teaching ethics to somebody relatively simply. You give them the ethical rules and now they know what's right or wrong. And of course they might not do what's right or wrong, but at least they would understand what's right or wrong. The virtue ethicist tends to reject this picture of ethics. They say ethics is not as easy as just listing out a set of rules. Ethics is about having a certain sort of ethical uh, judgment, the ability to make ethical judgments. And this is very hard to acquire. You only acquire it after many years of being brought up right and facing difficult ethical questions and looking at examples and learning from people wiser and older than you. And eventually some of us can acquire practical wisdom or practical judgment and become ethical people but this is a sort of continual process, and it's not an easy one, it's not a simple one. And when you finally acquire the ethical wisdom, you're not going to be able to write it down in a system of rules. Even if you ask the most ethical person you know what is the right thing to do, they're not going to be able to tell you uh, a set of rules that just tells you the right thing to do in every circumstance. They can only answer the question in particular circumstances. So. The word that we often use for this is particularism or particularistic. The idea is that there's not a general set of rules that covers everything. Rather, for each moral question, 
you have to make a particular judgment about that question using your practical wisdom or using your practical judgment. So the ethical person is someone who can look at a situation and tell you what the right thing to do is, but uh, that doesn't mean we can sum up ethics in a set of rules. Rather, ethics is about what the virtuous person would tell you to do in any particular situation, and that's going to depend on the situation. The third feature of virtue ethics that we'll look at is uh, that they're holistic. So if you think about Aristotle's approach to ethics, it's not a very narrow one where ethics is just about sort of, um, I don't know, being kind to people or doing what you wish uh, other people would do to you, or it's not about uh, one sort of central ethical principle or even two or three sorts of ethical principles. Ethics for him encompasses all factors of life and there's all sorts of virtues and there's a virtue appropriate to almost every sort of category of life. And in fact, it's even broader than that. So not only are there the virtues, but uh, Aristotle thinks the goal in life is to be eudaimon, is to be flourishing, is to be happy as our translation puts it. And that's a matter not just of being virtuous, but of a bunch of other stuff too. You have to uh, be wealthy enough so that you're not sort of starving to death or anything. In fact, you have to be wealthy enough to be able to help out other people and give away money. Otherwise, you won't be able to be fully virtuous. So uh, ethics is a matter of uh, wealth in addition to having the virtue. He thinks you have to be uh, pretty enough. So he thinks if you're sort of deeply ugly, uh, people aren't going to like you and you're not going to lead a happy life. And so ethics involves not just being a good person in the virtuous sense, but also being a good person, like good looking. Um, and so this is a very holistic approach. It incorporates lots and lots of stuff into ethics. And so virtue ethical systems are often like this. They think ethics includes lots and lots of factors of life. So even things that you might have thought are not ethical questions. So, you know, how is my beauty an ethical question? Or why is how much money I have an ethical question? Or um, Aristotle thinks you the only way to be happy is if you don't face uh, like severe bad luck or something. So if somebody murders all your children, he thinks you will not be happy, like too bad. And you might think, oh, well, that's strange. Can't I still be an ethical person, even if uh, all my children are murdered? And the thought is, well, I don't know, ethics in a narrow sense, sure. But that's not what Aristotle or virtue ethicists tend to be interested in. They're interested in the broad sense of how should one live? What is the good life? What is the right way to be? What is the best kind of human life? And that incorporates all sorts of stuff, including for Aristotle, whether your children do well or whether they don't do well. So that kind of holistic approach to ethics is characteristic, especially of Aristotle, but of a lot of virtue ethical approaches. And then finally, point number four, naturalism or naturalistic. So for Aristotle and for a lot of virtue ethicists, ethics depends on sort of the kind of thing that we are. We are a human being. So by nature, we are human beings. Our nature is to be whatever it is that we are, whatever this sort of species is. And the way Aristotle figures out basically the entirety of his ethics, the entirety of this book that we've read, um, is to look at what is the sort of good life or the characteristic life for a human being. So his book is about human beings. If he had written about the good life or eudaimonia or happiness or flourishing for a lion, or for um, a tree, it would be a very different book. And so for him, ethics is determined by the nature of the thing that we're talking about. And we draw all our conclusions about the thing from the nature of the thing. There's some things that we share with plants and with animals, but these are relatively minimal and they're not very important when it comes to determining sort of Aristotle's virtue ethics. So he doesn't spend a lot of time on the fact that, um, you know, we are mobile or we can move around or things like this, which is something we share with animals. That's just not very important to his ethics. What's important is what's sort of specific to what we are. And so that's the sort of 
the idea of like naturalism as the nature of the thing. So what are we by nature? We are human beings. And then there's another feature of virtue ethics and naturalism, which is that uh, Aristotle's ethics and many virtue ethics are informed by sort of investigation into the natural world or the way things are. So for Aristotle, this is linked to the other kind of point about nature. So what are we? We are human beings. How do we find out the characteristics of a human being? What is the characteristic life for a human being? Well, you can't figure that out just by thinking really hard about it. That's not something that you're ever going to discover in your head. You have to go out into the world and learn about human beings and investigate human beings. You have to investigate nature, so to speak. And so for Aristotle, ethics is not a purely um, intellectual endeavor uh, or a purely um, non-empirical endeavor is the easiest way of putting it. For him, ethics is partially empirical. To do ethics, we have to go out and investigate the nature of the world. And so that's another sense in which it's naturalistic. You have to learn about the natural world, the empirical world, the sort of thing science teaches us about in order to sort of fully answer ethical questions. A philosopher can't answer ethical questions on their own. They need information about the world. They need information about the natural world, which we get from science. Back in Aristotle's time, there was sort of no such thing as science. The philosophers were also investigating the natural world. But nowadays, the way we would do an Aristotelian sort of approach is say, let's take all the data we have from science about how human beings work. So ask the psychologists and the sociologists and uh, the biologists how human beings work and use this to build our ethical theory. And that's a naturalistic approach to ethics, which is characteristic of many virtue ethics approaches, especially Aristotelian virtue ethics approaches that follow on from Aristotle. And uh, as we'll see reading through the rest of the course, it's one that not all ethical theories share. So those are four sort of characteristics of especially Aristotle's virtue ethics, but virtue ethics generally. And it will be helpful to keep these in mind as points of comparison and contrast between the next two theories that we look at, deontology and consequentialism.